All right, first stop of day three, Vitus and Focal. And some, uh, well, you got a tape source here. Yes, it's actually, that's the Danish design. Um, obviously old, so it's from Lyric. Really? Uh, okay, I'm not familiar with this. No, not many are. It's a European thing. Is but, that right? Uh, this uh, was uh, designed and manufactured in Denmark ages ago. But we're taking the signal directly out on the head and we're using a Doshi tube uh, a preamp for, for the tape. Cool. Really cool. Yeah, that's our Naloxity media server. So okay. We have all the different sources, streaming, CD. What were you playing on tape here? What is... uh, this is the uh, Nagra 70-year-old uh, anniversary. Um, so, oh, whoops. In terms of uh, <laughs> content, though. Uh, what, yeah, this that? is like jazz and stuff jazz from and stuff? Uh, the okay. 70s. So. Oh, really? Okay. All right, Coltrane. And now this, the uh, first time me player. seeing the uh, black and white, which... Yeah, and the new way of doing the logo, we're lacing and engraving everything oh, wow. in-house now, so... Uh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the preamp, and that's the DAC with the streaming inside, the streaming module. This is Just, gorgeous, uh, yeah. Waiting to go to room for room certification, first product uh, shipped. No, I mean, that's beautiful. I love the black and white contract. And you said this is a, uh, it's a micro CK uh, by Chinese kind of... Yeah, it's, it's a replica Copy, of replica? the SX, uh, SX 5000 with an acoustical system tone arm and uh, a cartridge. Actually, the cartridge is the only one in the world right now playing. Is that right? Uh, so it's a new Palladium Plus. Um, don't remember retail. But it's, it's, let me see if I can get some light <laughs> on this. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, our, our phono stage. And below, there's the RI that you've seen in... Okay. Multiple colors, but this is a new color again, a new blue. Oh, that is cool. I gotta say, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you are showcasing these other colors. Because um, I wasn't aware of it. Oh, we can do, we can't do all colors, uh, okay. but we do take, uh, you know, requests. So we do have bespoke on our, on our line. So if people have a specific car or whatever they might have, uh, they think a uh, uh, fantastic color, you know, we will, we will do our best to do it. Some colors, we're not allowed to do. Okay. Some Pink. Bugatti Hi. and oh. Oh, okay. Ferraris and stuff. Okay. You know, we want our customer wants to have a specific uh, color like that, and you know, we have to ask for permission. And sometimes, it is okay. Yeah. Well, that's you can get close. <laughs> yeah, you can get close. But I mean, when you're spending this kind of money, that's part of the high-end experience. Customized, yeah. unless you're one of these flippers and stuff that, yeah. you know, you're worrying about resale. I want it to match my taste and my decor. Yeah, exactly. For that's the long the term. Point is actually the decor because we're. A lot of times, it's it's why you know we want to show the stuff that we have, but a lot of the more higher end um, clientele, they they want to have the result of the whole thing, but they don't really want to see it. So, in match to the decor, yeah. it becomes more invisible. Yeah, because it's not just wife here. acceptance factor; it's yeah. the owner's acceptance factor. I want it to match yeah. and look cool. And what uh, model? For These Cal are the uh, the scars. The scars. Okay. So um, the Evo. Uh, cool. So it's not their. It's their second smallest model in the um, uh, in that series, but the right choice for this room, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's ours. We, this is one of the speakers that we're using for final testing in, in our factory, so we okay. know it's fully broken in, which is can, can be a challenge when you borrow speakers from uh, manufacturers, is that they haven't broken them in. Well, probably. just being familiar with it, yeah, and knowing the nuances of setup. Yeah. Th We've those can had be. these for five years, so we know them. We know we know the do's and don'ts, let's say. And the model number of these again? These, this is the uh, SM103 in the Mark II version. So we've been shipping this for a few months, but this is actually the world premiere of, uh, of that particular model. And power-wise? It's uh, 100 watt class A in 8 ohm RMS, and it goes up in AB to about 150-ish watt uh, 8 ohm RMS. All our power ratings are RMS 8 ohm. So one thing to note, if you guys don't know about v, the Class A, you have the option to do Class A B, but yep. even running Class A, they don't get really hot. Yeah, most Class A amps you can't touch the heat sink because no, you do kind of a tracking bias kind of thing. No, we don't. We oh, don't, you don't. I don't believe in that. Okay. It's either Class A or it's not Class A. Okay. But, but the thing is, I like our customers to be able to have our products for a very long time, and you know, if they go to there, you can cook a steak on top of it. Yeah capacitors and other components they will they, they, they will don't like that, that. Yeah. yeah so we have products that's 
class A hundred watt, you know, the precessors of, of these being in the field for 18 years. Is that right? And we haven't seen any for our service or, or anything. So without any kind of tracking bias, how do you keep it cool? You just have so much heat sink? I yeah, I totally over exaggerate uh, the okay. heat sink. Okay. So, um, but there was, at the time, there was discussions in EU about having for consumer electronics right. a Limit maximum on how much. Yeah. Uh, uh, limit for how hot the surface could get, and okay. that would be around 55 or 50. I don't remember. It a long time ago, so we actually designed it for being 25 degrees Celsius above room temperature. Okay. So that's kind of uh, what, what we're aiming for. So you know, if we need bigger heat sinks for that, we'll do bigger heat sinks. But okay. You know, we we don't have the top off, but uh, you know it's not like it's empty on the inside. Uh, from the top here is one big transformer, and then it's four main capacitors, and it's filled. All the electronics are uh, to the at the bottom end. Okay, so they're, they're packed. There are seventy-five kilos each. Wow. So, uh, so the you racks. need to insure them because yeah. nobody's going to just pick them up and run away. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> are these uh, hi-fi stay racks? Yes, they are. Yep. Yeah. Those then, are cool. We put them in a little bit funny way here. Normally, you would put them a little bit wider. Uh -huh. um, but we did this for a reason because, you know, when we have audience in and there are a lot of people, you know, they might get a little bit close and scratch right. and the, the racks are more resilient, uh, will keep people away. So that's the reason we put them. It's cool. Like it's that. got like an exaggerated outrigger, yes. almost legs feel. It's cool looking. This is really attractive. Yeah, and the cool thing with them is if you have a uh, less deep but wider amp, you just, you know, you can place them. I mean, these are the same footprint. And you can have them narrow and deep, okay. like we have them here, or you can have them wide and not so deep. It's fully uh, adjustable, so they're very, very flexible. Yeah, that's so. what's really cool. Uh, yeah. I saw those at another show. All right, cabling, what are you using? PureTech. PureTech, um, okay. Top models. We've, again, this is something we know. Okay. We've used, we use, this is basically our showroom that we, we packed down and, and took, uh, took down here. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, we uh, we're firm believers in uh, don't uh, don't play with the unknown when you go to a show because that's just um, not a challenge you need um, when when you're at a show that's already stressful. And people don't re realize the need for outlets. And this is basically uh, is that a power distributor? Yes, that's also a FuroTech, uh, but it's okay. uh, it's not it's a special thing. And I can't explain the details okay. in there. Um, not in a proper way, anyway. That will do it justice. Sure. So, uh, so yeah. I see their cable elevators too. So that's yes, fewer take uh, as well. And Keep management good. <clears throat> we don't normally have the need for that in Denmark, but as soon as you are in a place like this, uh, you know, where you have lots of statics from the um, from the floor, it's you know. It makes well, just difference. for cable management and aesthetic mm. purposes, you know. So it yeah. makes people not go in there because <laughs> oh trust me i've seen people <laughs> even in my videos do that so. yeah well yeah well let's listen uh yeah, uh, let me spin the arms so okay cool all
sound out of this weird room design. Extra rug. Just a one point with everything. I forgot to ask you about the room treatments. Yeah. Uh, are these, what brand is this? Uh, Art Novian. Art Novian, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm familiar with them then. So, uh, yeah, it's the first time we're using them, which is why we came in on the Sunday to uh, to assemble them. Uh, okay. Simply because we knew there would be some challenges, and yeah, of course there were. So, I love it. I love it. The aesthetic here is just perfect. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, it's, uh, it creates a uh, nice atmosphere, and we can we have uh, Philips Hue lamps, uh, so we can do all sorts of oh, uh, really? okay. crazy things with the, with the lighting. Even That's cool. You know, as somebody said yesterday, oh, so it's now a strip club. Yeah, yeah okay. One, a few things missing for that. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what this room looks like without all of this, so kudos to you on yeah. doing a uh, great job with that. Thank you. Yeah, and we're, we just need um, Greg Barron to come in here with some of his tapes. I was eating dinner with him last night. Yeah, so, well, yeah. well, he was here. I mean, uh, I know him. So okay. uh, we were talking okay. about, uh, you know, if, if he's available for next year with his uh, big uh, team that, Team up with you. Yeah, yeah he, can, he can definitely come in. Okay. What do you have here? What are you trying to showcase? This is the new masterpiece phono stage. Big um, dual and capacitors. Yeah, that's the only capacitors that are actually in the signal path. Uh, okay. And they are actually the main reason we had to do a redesign because the ones we were using before was obsoleted. So this is the new packing. Okay. But you know, with so many things in the last few years, we had to wait about a year and a half before we could actually get samples because they couldn't get the raw material. And we just got these boards delivered on last Friday, okay. two hours before we were leaving the factory. So we managed to get, get it done. And this is because, as you can see in the video outside, is that we have all the machines for populating the board in-house. So when we finally received the boards, chucking them into the machines and getting them populated and so we could actually bring them so but this is why you know as we joke about this this particular funnel stage is probably the funnel stage with the best signal to noise ratio in the in oh, really world. yeah because there's no wires on it so it's dead quiet <laughs> well that's what yeah exactly <laughs> this one's totally dead i was about to ask you where are the wires okay no, I mean, that, that we couldn't manage okay. of course the external power supply is not here because that didn't change it's just really the yeah we, we did quite a few updates while we were at it because when you have to change the board anyway you know we might as well optimize as much as possible and now we have four inputs on it um, rather than the two slash three we have true before. balance yeah. design yeah and we were joking about somebody was asking what about the uh, the USB uh, for there but that you can get turntables that has a USB output so you can plug that oh, into but okay. that was obviously a joke this yes, is for because, firmware uh, updating yes it says <laughs> yeah. service board but yes, yeah exactly you can. now the uh, power supply is going to be about the same size chassis it's the same size yes okay. completely the same size this is just the internet uh, oh <laughs> and now we have the club again <laughs> it's just me sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though yeah and this is for photographers, then it's easier. <laughs> it's so, so yes. I'll put this to the side so I don't do it again. Yeah, this obviously is only the internal chassis, so this is how we manufacture them. We can test them, we can burn them in, we can okay. do whatever, and then, uh, you know, store them. Um, and then, uh, you know, wh whatever color a customer is choosing, we just have to uh, put the external parts on. So the power supply is exactly the same. Um, other than, of course, the board is shorter because you have multiple transformers sitting. Yeah, so, sure. Uh, sure. So, yeah. No, this is great that you're not afraid to show what's under the hood, and that's, you know. No, but I come from the DIY background. Oh, okay. I, I mean, Do you? Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. The reason I became an electronic engineer was because, you know, I was playing drums and stuff, so, you know, I was just into the music and I wanted to learn what was going on on the inside because you know I was the guy at 14 I took the top off and I was looking inside I had no clue so that's actually why I became an electronic engineer and okay. I always had this fascination for like AccuFace you look inside AccuFace and it, I mean the yeah. way they do stuff it's fantastic so it has to be like that okay before, before it's a product that I that I like that's great so, to hear no, we're never yeah afraid of showing it yeah, well, one time we'll have to do a Zoom interview or something um, and uh, showcase us a little bit more. Sure. Well, well we have a new agent now in the, in the U.S. I think you met him during Exponer. Aldo. Okay. Oh, Aldo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, yeah, I know Aldo, well, yeah. So it's uh, whatever, you know, uh, you would like to do, coordinate with him. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely uh, accommodate. Okay, great. Uh, I'm, I'm just the R&D guy now. We did, okay. Uh, last year we did the first... Um, in a transition 
So uh, my son, my wife. So nice to meet you. Our son uh, is actually now um, the CEO of the company. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and one of our uh, young employees, only 26, he's actually running the factory. So they own 50% of the company. Okay. So I'm just doing R&D now. Okay. So um, so now you got some free time though to do this. Yes. I, okay. I, uh, I'm back to where it all started. Me okay. just uh, goofing around, making stuff that I never ever see, you know, Right. Ins the inside of one of our products, you know, but that's where I, I uh, thrive it's, uh, in terms of new ideas, is just to have no boundaries. And of course, when you're within a company like ABA Group, it's called, we have both, both a lot of which is our son that started that, okay. and BA. We have certain things that we do in certain ways, but with my new role, I can pretty much do whatever I want to do. And then if they approve, it will get into a product. If not, okay. well, at least I have fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, well, it looks good inside and out. Yeah, so uh, props on that. Actually, one, imp uh, one important thing to mention, at least I think it's important, is you know when people ask, why do you use um, nitric uh, uh -huh. connectors on the back? And there's a specific reason for that. Really? And that is, you know, some people might want to have four XLI inputs. Some people might want to have, you know, four RCA inputs, and they're all in the same socket. So we can actually accommodate whatever swap, okay. type of inputs people they want. So that's, that's the main reason. Why okay. Keep yeah. Okay. So great. Well, thanks. Uh, good kickoff to day three. All right. Have a great show. Good meeting you. you good seeing you. you. Take, Take care. care.